This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. Time is now 8.30. Following program was transcribed earlier. Entry, the Catch Scarlet Queen, Philip Carney, Master. Position, 6 degrees 42 minutes south, 116 degrees 6 minutes east. Wind light, sky fair. Remarks, departed port of Bulilong, Bali, after trouble over stores. Reason for trouble, Ah Sin and the Balinese Beaux-Arts Ball. <laughs> For three days out of Macassar, we rode the long swells that rolled out of the Java Sea before the winds of the northwest monsoon. And on the morning of the 4th, we raised the peak of Gunung Agung with its guardian formation of cumulus clouds streaming eastward in the brilliant sky and shadowing the island of Bali spread out below. Kang's orders for the port of Bulilong were some of the most important we'd received on the voyage. We were to take on stores. Not ordinary stores, but salvage gear, diving gear, heavy jury anchors. All equipment to be used at the end of our quest for Kang's $10 million treasure of Chinese relics. To be used to lift it from hiding and place it in the cargo holds of the Scarlet Queen. By two o'clock that afternoon, we'd fought the treacherous currents that swirl in and out of the shallow indentation that is Bulilong Harbor. And by sunset, we'd found a berth at a small public quay. After we were secure, my chief mate Gallagher and I headed up into town to find our contact, a man named De Groot, the owner of the Bangka ship chandlers. The building was easy to find. The first premonition I had that anything was wrong was the blast of jasmine perfume that swept over me as we walked in. But I couldn't make myself believe it until I saw the brocade-wrapped mountain of flesh and the childlike features lost in the billowing fat, the lacy handkerchief drawn through the large jade ring, and the dainty, dimpled hands. He still looked Chinese, and he still sounded like Charles Lawton. Well, the dashing Captain Connie. So nice to see you again. Oh, sir. Stinky! Where's De Groot? What the devil are you doing here? A stroke of luck, sir. I reached an agreement with DeGroote just last evening. At the moment, I am the owner of the Banca ship chandlers. That's enough for me. I'm getting out. Now, just hold on. Don't y'all go going off half cock now. Very concisely put, Mr. Mangan. It couldn't have been. The Mangan we'd run into in Tiansin had died. But this one looked like him and talked like him. And more to the point, like the other one, he sported a pearl-handled frontier model Colt. So Mutual continues The Voyage of the Scarlet Queen, written by Gil Dowd and Bob Tallman, and starring Elliot Lewis. The Scarlet Queen, proudest ship to plow the seas, bound for uncharted adventure. Every week a complete entry in the log, and every week a league further in the strange Voyage of the Scarlet Queen. Austin, let's have it. What do you want? You find me in dire need of your help, says. Yeah, I'll bet. Now, don't go interrupting Austin all the time, will you? Uh, Just let him have his say. Thank you, Mr. Mangan. Oh, by the way, sirs, this is Mr. Mangan, my confidential secretary. You possibly remember his brother. Brother? Uh, deceased in the line of duty. Yeah, I remember. I must say that although I do miss Richard, his brother Robert has developed into a most satisfactory associate. Uh, but my problem... 
I am caught between two equally powerful forces, and I must admit I'm at a loss as to which way to turn. Upon the one side, Mr. Constantino, upon the other, your own employer, Kuji Kang. Both gentlemen hungering after esteem and wealth, and... Uh, <laughs> dear me, I find myself embroiled. Yeah, I'll bet you fought to stay out all right. Oh, yes, indeed. I made myself most unavailable. Yeah. I, I was, in fact, taking my ease of, aboard one of my pearling luggers off the tanning bars when I was approached by a courier from Mr. Constantino, a quite superior type of chap, Roland Galter by name. Yeah. I disliked him immediately, but... Alas, he offered me $10,000, merely to describe to him the stores that are to be placed aboard your ship. He could thus duplicate the order, and Constantino would also be suitably equipped for the final struggle to wrest the fortune from its hiding place. So you turned it over to him? Uh, not yet. Mm -hmm. What's holding you up? To be quite candid, sir, I have become obsessed with a notion. No. To wit that perhaps you might prevail upon Mr. Kang to offer me a slightly larger sum to turn your supplies over to well, you. Well, well, if that uh, is... Uh, now, just wait a minute. Hold on, uh, will you? Just wait a minute. Don't you all go getting riled up in that tone of voice. Our sin was just trying to set your minds to thinking. He could just as well have told me to pick you off as you come through that door. He didn't. He's just trying to be friendly. Thank you, Mr. Mangan. That will be quite enough, I think. Well, Captain... What have you done with DeGroote? Mr. DeGroote is vacationing at a secluded spot near the center of the island. And he told me to tell you that he don't want to be disturbed. Yeah, that's logical. Well, Captain? Well, where's the closest cable office so I can get word to Kang? You would, in your message, suggest that he make a counteroffer? What else? Splendid. Uh, then I've anticipated you. I've already communicated with Mr. Kang, uh, painting clearly the situation, including the uh, intense danger in which you and your chief officer find yourself. What do you mean by that? Mr. Galter, sir, a most dislikable fellow. He would kill you both should you learn of the plan, or should the plan fail. So you see, you are indeed in intense danger. Yeah, thanks. Now then, shall we go? Go where? To meet your enemy, Mr. Galter, and his charming comrade, Loretta. For the occasion, I prepared a small welcoming ceremony at my residence here. Thanks again, but I think we'd rather go back to the ship. Mr. Mangan? Maybe our sin's invite was too polite for you. Just move, Dad Gummit. Get headed out that door. Ah Sin's house was like the resident governor's palace. And his small welcoming ceremony, from what we could see of it from the entrance hall, was a South Seas version of the Beaux-Arts Ball. I have found it a great boon in situations of tenseness to call upon pleasure in generous portions. So I see. I can tell from here it's been a great party. Yeah, but don't forget, Corny, I'm going to be riding herd on you from someplace. Thank you, Mr. Mangan. Shall we go in? Ah Sin minced across the hall with Red and me following in the backwash of jasmine that flowed from him. Mangan brought up the rear. The big room we entered was well supplied with people, food, and liquor. The people were mostly Balinese and mostly female, which meant that they were of a type world hail for coloring, form, and costume. The food was heaped from one end of 40 feet of polished teak table to the other, and had come from every corner of the world. The bar was supplied with the same eye toward variety. As we reached the center of the room, a supple young girl stepped onto a low platform, began rising to the rhythms of a few musicians who squatted beside her. <laughs> if we gotta have trouble, Skipper, this is the way I want it. This is the way you got it, so watch your step, will you? You could enjoy my little party, gentlemen. Yeah, it's great. Could be very relaxing. Indeed. The true purpose of such fare and such company. Mr. Mangan, uh, take Mr. Gallagher to the bar. Yes, sir. Come on, Red. <laughs> See you later, Skipper. Yeah, Red. Now, sir, if you will come with me, you shall meet the other element in our little uh, triangle. Galter and his charming comrade were waiting for us in a quieter corner. He wasn't outstanding. Heavy-featured, stocky, half a head shorter than I, carrying his cargo a little too much drink. But Loretta, Loretta was different. Auburn hair loosely framing a delicately tanned face. 
eyebrows arching over soft brown eyes with lashes that almost but not quite touched the eyebrows. And a habit of caressing her own full mouth with her fingertips, though she liked it too. Like all good hosts, Captain Carney, I like to surround myself with people of all types. Here is my Caucasian display. Miss Loretta Finley ah. and Mr. Roland Galton. I, repre- do do, I resent that Caucasian display, I said. Oh, come now, a mere pleasantry. All right. I resent that kind of pleasantry. Then. Oh, Roland, drop it. No, you don't like my attitude. All right, I'll take it out with me when I go, if the kind Oriental will still allow me the use of the room. Good night. A surly pig. Oh, come, come, come now, my dear. Mr. Calder shall in no way lessen the pleasures of the evening. Shall he, Captain? The rest of the guests seem to be living through it. Uh, Arsene? Indeed. And in the face of food, drink, and music, uh, why not live? (laughs) I will look into the welfare of your chief officer, sir. In the meantime, I hope that you two will enjoy each other as well as my hospitality. Did that sound a little pointed to you? A little, yeah. He takes his name too seriously. (laughs) Come on, let's have a drink or something. That's as good a way to start as any. She was not only beautiful, but she was led by instinct and well-versed in using the same instinct on others. We went from the bar to the wide-screen veranda, then to some comfortable rattan furniture in a secluded corner of the softly-scented garden. What's the matter, Phil? What could be? Just wishing I knew you better. Why? So I'd know why you were here. In Bulalong? No, no. Here. Oh. Because you appealed to me. Hmm? How about Galter? He doesn't appeal to me anymore. You do. Come here, darling. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. Are you glad? I'm human. I know you are. Oh, I know you are, darling. Mm. Ah! What was that? No, what is it? How about you telling me? No, no, my arm, you're hurting me. To bring me out here to get me out of the way? No, Phil. Really, I didn't know he was going to do anything. Phil, let go! Get down and stay there. I'll tell you later if you're lying or not. By the time I got to the house, the place was in a frenzy. I saw Gallagher crumpled on the floor, and Galter was stepping over his body. It only took one look to see that he was anything but drunk. What's going on, Galter? Okay, Connie. Keep moving this way. What have you done to Gallagher? Man, his size is safer on the floor. You look pretty good there yourself. Hell, on, try it, Connie. Stop talking before I do. Right now, that gun doesn't scare me. It makes me mad. Go on, get mad. Everybody's out in the open now. What do you mean by that? I've seen to it that the message from our Cinder Kang never got out of bully long, Connie. Whatever bargaining's to be done will be done by me, which means none. Now turn around and face the door. Okay, it's your party, Galter. Where are we going? You really want to know? You're staying here. Wait. The throb in my head, the pain of an arm twisted under me were the lines that finally pulled me back to what was left of my world. It was inky dark. I was lying on a floor. Warm mouth. Such a warm... Skipper? You here, too? Yeah. So I've seen. I've been laying here for four or five years, I guess, not moving for fear that plunk head would flash me again. What happened, Red? I was outside, being human. Well... All of a sudden, Galter had Arsene laid out like we were, and then Mangan. Galter's quite a boy. Where's Arsene now? A couple of natives dragged him and Mangan out the back way. Yeah. My head's got a knot the size of a heaving lead. If I ever get my Hold hands it, on it. Hold it. What is it? I don't know. Listen. Phil? Quiet, Red. 
Yeah? Thank heaven I finally found the room. What do you want? Phil, believe me, I didn't draw you away from the house for any reason except my own. Listen, I can get you out of here. Will you trust me? Candidly, no. Here's Mangan's gun. Now will you trust that me? That if you gave me the Royal Dutch artillery. Everything you do is just too pat. This, for example, why? Because I want to get rid of Galter. I want you to kill him. You're faded. I'll take that one. Okay, gorgeous. Lead the way. It isn't much, but it's the best offer we've had since the lights went out. I didn't know where she was taking us, but wherever it was, we went on foot. We picked up the smells of the harbor at low tide. Then the greasy shine of the water. She led us out onto a pier. To a shack set up on pilings. We opened the door. Mixed with the stench of mud, there drifted the faint odor of jasmine. And huddled in a corner, tied hand and foot, and with his head hanging in shame, his robe soiled and torn, was our sin. Across from him was Mangan. Leave me. I beg of you. Go. Leave me to my shame. Well, that's a fine reaction, isn't it? Oh, now, sin, don't go acting that way. I demand not to request that you leave me the infinitesimal bit of face I might save from this cruel series of events. Well, unloose me, Corny. I'm going gunning for a varmint named Galt. Uh, you're going to race me. Yeah, spread your hands so I can get this blade between them. Yeah. Get his feet, will you, Red? Oh, boy. Do you know where Galt will go? I've got a mighty strong hunch. Huh? If he's looking for them supplies of yours and he don't find them in the warehouse, I figure he'd go right back to our sin's house. Where they at? There, there you are. Yeah. Oh, thank you. There. Oh, well, say, uh, ain't that that little old coat of mine that you got? Yeah. Here, Mangan, you can have it. Well, look up there now. <sighs> All right, now. Now, don't you fret none, us then. If I could see but one small glimmer of hope. Oh, buck up, you old horse thief. Look, we don't have time to stay here and argue with you. Come on, our sin. We're going to save your face. Asin's house was still lighted when we got there. The main room still cluttered by the table full of food, the refuse left by the people who'd been there. Gallagher and Mangan started through the place looking for Galter. Asin, Loretta, and I stayed in the big room to watch the exits. It was about five minutes after the search started that we heard Mangan flush him. Heads up, everybody. Here I come. I moved toward the door that led from the long hallway. I heard him running toward me. Then when he broke from the doorway, I made a short ten-foot rush. I hit him from his left, my right shoulder driving into his legs just above the knee so that my body swung in front of him and he crashed over me. Oh, the bruises gun barrel had left behind my ear got bumped in the first impact. And with the anger the pain brought me, I let him up. Stood back, then went in again to regain the face I'd lost when he gunned with me. Well, doggone. You get yourself into a temper when you get to going, don't you? <laughs> Watch it, Mangan. You don't come out of it for a while, either. Phil, darling, are you all right? Get away from me. Leave me alone. Phil! You can kill him yourself. I've had enough of him. Captain, when the final accounting is made... Shut I... up! Oh, calm down, Skipper. You've had your fun. He slugged me, too, and I didn't even get a crack at him. Uh, sorry, Red. Uh. Well, who's doing the bargaining now? I've tried, Phil. But if you'll let me, I'd like to try again. All right, if you want to do something, go mix me a drink. All right, Phil. Captain, your instinct is infallible. What do you mean by that? Sending that dreadful woman away. See here. What? Proving that Galter is not the only one capable of intercepting cables. This missive from Constantino addressed not to Galter, but to Miss Loretta Finley. Where is it, sir? <laughs> The cable didn't make me feel any worse or any better, but it did make sense. Loretta Finley was the loyal Constantino worker. Since we were so close to Kang's treasure, Galter had decided to hide the information about my equipment, outfit his ship himself, and enter the race on his own. So finally, the warm trip to the softly scented garden made sense. Well, sir, would you like to claim her yourself for chastisement? No. You can have her. Oh, splendid, splendid. Mr. Mangan, uh, go apprehend Miss Loretta. We will sell her for a handsome profit to the first party leaving for the Asia mainland. Well, we could send her down to Texas. I'd take a fight out of her. Well, sir, when the final accounting, uh, I believe it is safe to assume that we may 
part as we met, on equal footing and as the best of friends. My broken furniture and dishes, a not inconsiderable item notwithstanding. Your face is all right? Indeed. Since you, my friend, saw to it that Galter's activities were terminated on my premises, I feel that I have indirectly but conclusively saved the situation. Well, that's a boy, Austin. I know you'd come up, Buckingham. My debt to you is even now so great that my greatest sacrifice barely suffices to even the score. I give to you your supplies. Well, you're very generous, Austin. <laughs> Indeed. Thank you, sir. I, I may say that you are a most estimable man yourself, sir. By nine the next morning, the equipment was aboard and we pushed out against the tide toward the Flore Sea and the next port, an anchorage off Halmahera. Our bow lifted under the deep water swell, and the damp monsoon rolled down across our port quarter. Stand by to make sail! The crew, keyed to excitement by the diving gear we'd taken aboard, jumped to their stations, reminded again that it was an important ship they'd signed on. Stop it, sheep! The expanse of the mainsail followed the head climbing up the mast, flapped hopefully for a number of seconds, and settled back comfortably under the wind that finally filled it. The jibs ran up, then the mizzen. And the Scarlet Queen slashed into the swells as though impatient. As though the wind and sea she had were not enough for her to work with. Uh, Tipper, I uh, want to ask you a question. Fire away, Red. Uh, well, uh, when you said you were out in the garden acting human, just what did you mean? Well, Red, I was... Uh, huh? I was just admiring all the glories of Bali, that's all. That's human. Uh, yeah, uh, that's what I thought, of course. I knew you wouldn't be wasting your time with Loretta. What do you know about it? <laughs> what do you think you were babbling about when you were coming to after that knock on the head? Yeah? Hmm. Well, what do you know about that? Nothing. I'm waiting for you to tell me. Would a, a drink help, Skipper? To bring back memories or drown regrets? Suit yourself, Skipper. Okay, I will. After you, mate. After you. Log entry, the catch Scarlet Queen. Miles traveled from San Francisco, 17,172. Sky fair, wind light. Ship secure for night. Signed, Philip Carney, master. Mutual invites you to sail into further adventure on the voyage of the Scarlet Queen next week, same time. Porto Call, Galela Halmahera. The Voyage of the Scarlet Queen stars Elliot Lewis as Phil Carney with Ed Max as Gallagher, and tonight featured Bill Conrad as Arsin with Barton Yarborough as Mangan. Galter was Paul Fries and Loretta Ann Tobin. Music scored and conducted by Richard Arant. The Scarlet Queen, produced by James Burton, is written by Gil Dowd and Bob Tallman. This program came to you from Hollywood. Stay tuned now for Mr. Show Business, the man who brings Broadway straight to your door. Yes, it's Billy Rose pitching horseshoes in just a moment, followed by the newspaper of the air. This program was transcribed. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.
K.H.J. Los Angeles. Hear ye, hear ye, delicious gum made by Adams. Adams Clove, Beeman, Pepsin, Chiclet, and Dentine. For chewing gum with long-lasting flavor, buy gum by Adams. The time is now 8.55. 